Welcome, welcome. I think we're ready to begin. Welcome to Central New Mexico Community College. I am Paula Smith Hawkins. I am the Associate Dean responsible for Fine Arts. And I'm so glad to see people here tonight. This is wonderful. This is a continuation in a series of uh, artist talks that we've had in collaboration with uh, 516 Arts. For the students that are here, I want to share with you that 516 Arts is Albuquerque's premier nonprofit art space uh, down 516 Central. And it's a place for learning uh, about great art, great artists, about community activism, about thinking about your place and belonging. So I am going to turn this over to our um, executive director. Uh, I sit on the board of 516 Arts along with Nancy Salem. I think she's our other board member visiting tonight. And our executive director, Suzanne Barge, Sabarge, who's going to talk about uh, what our presentation tonight is about and our artist, uh, Floyd Tunson. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. I'll just make a few quick announcements. Thank you, Paula and Nancy Salem from our board for being here tonight. And thank you to the 516 staff who's been pulling the show together beautifully. Rhiannon Mercer, Claude Smith, and Teresa Buscemi are here tonight. Um, I'd like to quickly thank our funders of the exhibition. It was organized by the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center and curated by Blake Miltier, who's here tonight and will be speaking. And it was funded by West Staff and the NEA. Um, and 516 is made possible by the McCune Charitable Foundation, the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts, the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund of the City of Albuquerque, uh, the Albuquerque City Council, Bernalillo County, New Mexico Arts, Hotel Andaluz, and our lead media partner is the Albuquerque Journal, among several others. So we couldn't do it without them. 516, as Paula said, is a nonprofit, so it's a very grassroots process. We welcome volunteers and um, it's all about learning and sharing ideas and creating a platform for dialogue. It's not necessarily a sales gallery. It's, it's sort of a hybrid kind of space. Local IQ called 516 Arts um, an innovated, innovative learning laboratory or something like that. Anyway, um, Tonight, we also have a few of the exhibition catalogs for sale here, and Floyd might sign them after the talk. If you'd like to buy one, they're $30. We'll also have them at the opening night, and maybe you can get Floyd to, to sign them then. Um, I just want to run down the handout that, that you all got when you came in. The opening is this Saturday from 6 to 8. If you've ever been to an opening at 516, you know it's a big party. It's a lot of fun. We'll have live music with a Haitian and world music band called Racine Creole and tractor brewing and food trucks. Uh, and uh, that's free and open to the public this Saturday night. And then on October 11th, in two weeks at 516 Arts, we have a series called 516 Words that's generally a literary arts series, but sometimes we mix it up with other art forms. So this night is going to include storytelling, poetry, music, and theater with Idris Goodwin, who's from coming down from Colorado, Hakim Bellamy, who probably many of you know as Albuquerque's uh, most recent first poet laureate, uh, Tanaya Winder, Ramona King, storyteller who may be here tonight, Ramona, and um, Zach Freeman, a beatboxer who will be collaborating with Ramona, so it sh that should be a great night. And then on uh, Saturday, November 1st, we have an international music event and art happening that we're producing at the Albuquerque Rail Yards. It's the project called One Beat, which is an international um, music uh, innovative form of diplomacy that actually the State Department is funding where they select artists from, musical artists from all over the world and they bring them together to do a sort of traveling residency ac across a portion of the United States where they work with communities and they compose music together and they perform along the way. So we'll be having um, 25 musical artists from 17 countries who will converge for the end of their tour here at the Albuquerque Rail Yards and they'll be performing and we'll also have a whole series of art installations um, 
uh, curated by local artist Billy Joe Miller. So that's going to be a great night. That's just a $5 donation. So it's an incredible way to see all these artists from around the world. And then in November, we have a public program related to this exhibition. The, the writer, Michael Datcher, will be coming from Los Angeles, and he'll be doing a reading of his new book called Americus, which is um, very much about issues relating to the work that Floyd Tunson has also created. And um, it'll be performed with a pianist, John Rangel, and open for uh, community discussion, as tonight will be as well. I know Floyd and Blake would like to speak with you all after the presentation. And we also have um, Kathy Wright here tonight. It's a special surprise. She's the director of the Albuquerque Museum. And she has a history with Floyd and Blake and his work from her time in Colorado. So she'll be participating in tonight's talk. So without further ado, thank you, everyone. And please welcome Blake Miltier, Floyd Thompson, and Kathy Wright. Thanks, Suzanne. Thanks, you all, for coming. Uh, thanks to the folks at 516. Uh, you, you all are in for an amazing experience. I think something like not like you've experienced before. And the image you see up here is Floyd in his studio. And, you know, I, I always like to think, you know, in, in my job curating, in my job directing the, the fine, uh, museum at the Fine Arts Center in Colorado Springs, you know, we end up doing a whole lot of things that can tend to start moving their way further and further away from the art. And it all comes back to the art. And it all comes back to the artist. And it all comes back to that place that the art happens. And with Floyd, Working on this show has been uh, an amazing experience that uh, for, for us, working on the, the show that uh, was at the Fine Arts Center in 2012, that was really the, the sort of origin of the, the show that you'll see here, uh, we worked on that for five years prior to when the show actually opened. And so what we're going to do tonight is to give you some insight into how that came about, and that's going to happen through uh, Kathy Wright's experiences working with Floyd uh, for a show that was at the Fine Arts Center back in 2005, so she'll tell you a little bit about that. And then I'll continue talking a little bit about how where I sort of picked up after that and how uh, it ended up here. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the art itself and what you're going to, to experience when you go over to the gallery uh, to give you a little bit of insight, give you a little bit of, uh, give you some tools to uh, kind of pull some threads once you get over there. Uh, and then we'll open it up to you all for some uh, questions and, and answers. So without further ado, I think let's get started. So. Kathy and Floyd, uh, we'll, we'll come up here so you can uh, so you can see us all. And I think we'll start with Kathy talking about where you began for the 2005 okay. show. Thanks for coming, and um, it's exciting to talk to students and people who really want to know and are interested in the processes of art. And um, I'm really honored to be here. Um, Floyd's an old friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time. I started at the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center. I was a predecessor of uh, Blake's in 1983. So I, I've known Floyd since then. One of the great pleasures of being connected with Floyd was that on occasion, you got to go over to a studio, which was an art installation in itself. It's absolutely an incredible place. And it's great to see an artist in their space and what influences them and what materials they all gather together to make their art and make a statement. Um, I wanted to just say that, uh, OK, I'm just going to flatter him for one second and say that uh, I was in Colorado Springs for more than 20 years. And there were probably maybe two or three artists that I thought were the most fantastic artists whose work really could be nationally recognized. And his is one of them. And I'm really thrilled that we're finally getting his work outside of Colorado Springs. 
and into Albuquerque, and I think it's going next to Billings, Montana, right? So, because he is an artist whose work deserves to be seen by many people. Um, let's see. Um, having said that, I'd say that one of the great things that made me kind of think that we really should do an exhibit of Floyd's. And the exhibit we had at the Fine Arts Center when I was there, which was in 2005, was small. It was two galleries, maybe uh, 6,000 square feet. After I left, they built a huge building, and the exhibit that Blake did got to include many, many more things. Um, and the catalog, if you get a chance, uh, if you can't buy it, look through it and see the breadth of work that's in there. I just wanted to quickly go through kind of the way I looked at Floyd's art, because I knew him for a long time. It was a long time before we got to a point where we actually did an exhibit together. Um, and his early work was really a lot of um, social statements about the condition of African Americans and uh, underprivileged people in the United States and in different areas of the United States. And it was all done with assemblage and collage and a lot of uh, found objects, but also really haunting images of people in different places. And you'll see that in his work. And then, after a while, he was like transforming into other areas and was working on a series called Haitian Boats. And um, this is one that he's making in the slide here. And um, there was a particular um, painting that went along with one of those, a very haunting painting of a man, a Haitian man floating in the ocean um, that was juxtaposed with all of these boats. And it was just this going out of this very localized space uh, where he was creating art and, and starting to look more at a um, more global view of that experience. Um, and in between all that, he would do things like pop-up rodeo, uh, which was based on an actual rodeo that was an African-American rodeo in Colorado, right? It was, uh, I forget the guy's name, Bill Pickett Rodeo. Bill Pickett rodeo. Um, but still, wonderful images. Um, and then from time to time, he would go back and forth to these um, installations, and I call them deconstructions, um, with people like Delta Queen, which was based on the Delta in the South, and juxtaposed a lot of life things that you would see there, um, besides people, um, you know, images about music and instruments and um, pots and pans and old gas stations and that sort of thing. And you find when you go through his um, generations of work that some of those themes come back and come back into the um, later pieces. And then he went off on this crazy thing. I don't know what got into him, I said. But um, it was a series of very large, gorgeous, luscious, abstract paintings um, called the Nubian series, which were about um, Nuba warriors in Africa. And he'll probably talk a little bit more about that. And it was such a diversion that it was, um, it was stunning to see those paintings that were so different from these very real um, social gut-wrenching images that he was using up until then. But it was still there in those images. And then later on, um, he went back to constructions, um, did a lot of pop remix types of things, and uh, came up with this fantastic series, which I think he actually started about when I left in 2006, which was taking uh, the cartoon character Tintin, um, who was in Africa, and juxtaposing it with fantastic images that were reminiscent of Picasso and Matisse. And it was the sort of thing where if you weren't prepared for it, you would go into the gallery and you'd see this painting that looked like a fantastic Matisse. And then you go, oh, oh what's going on here? And I'm so happy that um, there are a couple of those paintings at 516 that you'll get to see. Um, and then, of course, um, 
he's always evolving and doing things, but there's always this thread running through it. And I think that what you'll find by looking at the art and listening to him talk and uh, listening to Blake's presentation, you'll see that this thread, that even though the artist changes its medium, changes their medium and their ideas and their ways of getting stories across, there's always that very strong thread that runs through all of them, even though on the surface it doesn't quite look at it. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Get on with the show and the real artist here. So thank you for listening. Thanks, Kathy. That's great. And all of what Kathy was saying was uh, sort of what I came into when I came to the Fine Arts Center in uh, 2007. And Kathy had come down here by that point, and you all are the better for it. And um, so we had a whole new, as Kathy mentioned, kind of identity sort of opening up with a big expanded facility uh, in which they increased our gallery size by a little over double what they were before and um, really opening up a whole whole new sort of can of worms uh, for us for us to deal with but it opened up possibilities as well in terms of what we were able to do there well I'd been at the Denver Art Museum for about six years prior to that uh, I was familiar with Floyd's work through just a couple of different pieces. One was in the Denver Art Museum's collection. It was a piece called Before and After and, and um, sort of represented uh, a group of dictatorial looking type folks uh, and you know some figures hanging upside down in the background. It's a tough, tough piece from the early 90s, I believe, right around the same time as the Haitian dreamboats that Kathy was mentioning. Anyway, tough work. And I only ever saw it in storage. They, they didn't take it out at that point. Um, and then I was familiar with another group of images Floyd had done called the Raw Deal, which depicted a man hanging. And you'll see one of those images shortly. And um, so I knew there was a definitive sort of political and social thread uh, that ran through his work. But that's really all I knew of it. Hadn't met Floyd at that point. Um, I knew that he was highly respected among artists in that region and that tells you a lot when artists are looking at other artists work and talking about other artists work then the rest of us need to turn our heads and look in that direction. So that meant a lot. So I got down to the Springs uh, had sort of a crash course in the in the permanent collection down there before we actually had to install it in the galleries. And as I'm going through the, the collection storage, there was this big, amazing 14-foot abstract painting. Really bold, saturated hues, really kind of expressive application of paint. Oh man, this is amazing. I've got to get this up on the walls for the initial installation without knowing who it was. I just thought, this, this has got to go on the walls. And as I started researching things, found out it was Floyd Tunson. Oh, wow, uh, this could not be more different than the work I knew. Um, so we put it up, and it must have been within days after that building opened, uh, Floyd's assistant called me and said, Mr. Tunson would like to meet with you. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't, well, uh, uh, maybe he doesn't like where I put the painting. I don't know. Um, so we met. I think we had a nice, nice lunch out on the balcony. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was pleasant. It was fun. And, and uh, yeah, then as almost always happens, you know, when, when something clicks, when there's an interest, you know, the next step for me as a curator is, is to go there, go to the studio, go see what's, what's going on at the studio. So I did. It wasn't too long after that. I think I went out to the studio. And so I had these what seemed like poles, right? These very politically oriented paintings and then this very expressionist abstract painting. And so I went out to the studio and what I saw immediately, because in Floyd's studio, 
you, I mean, there's work all over the walls. There's work hanging from the ceiling. There, you know, there's work stacked up against the uh, up against the walls. There are storage rooms filled with art. And immediately, I realized, well, here here was everything else in between, and started to see at least stylistically right away these, as as Kathy described them, threads throughout the art, even though the manifestation, you know, what you see there in the end was very, very different, right? So started, started thinking, wow, this, this, I've not seen anything like this in Colorado, and I think Kathy was absolutely spot on in terms of, of Floyd being an artist whose work really could hold up to anything, anywhere, any time. Um, and, and, yeah, it really could. Uh, so, you know, LA, New York, here you come. So, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so we kept talking. Uh, Floyd did new work. Um, it, actually, the, the work Kathy was talking about, the remix works with Matisse and Picasso, and, um, started seeing those, started seeing some interest in Floyd's work from Denver, and thought, hmm, you know, I didn't see Kathy's show back in 2005, but there was a beautiful little catalog for it, and I knew that very well, and thought, ah, we've got to do something. We've got to do something here before somebody else, somewhere else gets to it, right? So I thought, well, all of this work really needs a big, 40 plus year survey, right? From Floyd's earliest work all the way to now. And so we can really look at that, really dig in, really kind of figure out, um, you know, what this artist is, is, is on about by virtue of immersion with the work. So we started talking about that and, and talked about the fact that we had to make sure we got new work in there. And so we, we planned it for about five years out from when we first started talking and allowed that time for it to grow, allowed that time for us to find the right kind of uh, narrative and uh, pathway through our galleries to, to take people through it. And what I wanted people to see, and this is where we put a lot on the viewer, is all the way from the early work in the early 70s, all the way to pieces that were made the same year that the show opened. In fact, the, the last piece in the show was finished like two weeks before the show opened. Um, wanted people to see this really diverse group of works in which, you know, our, Floyd is dealing with everything from the most realistically painted portraits you've ever seen to very expressionist abstract paintings, to things that feel very pop art oriented, to things that, uh, that feel, you know, kind of that in-between space that maybe somebody like Robert Rauschenberg or Jasper Johns occupied, to, you know, the, these very recent assemblage pieces. So, we had, uh, we had it all in there, and what I wanted people to, to see is by the time they got to the end of the show, that everything they'd experienced on the way could tie back almost anywhere else in the show. And that was a tall order. It was a big space. It was a big show. There were 110 pieces in that show. So it was, it was an overwhelming experience. Many people said that. It was overwhelming. And, um, you know, I think maybe two or three people got <laughs> those threads. And, 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 you know, I'm the first person to say, you know what, if three people got something, sometimes that's, that's just enough, right? Um, but what you're going to see here at 516 is something different. You're going to see a lot of the same work that was in that show. But you're going to be able to stand in one place. And on this side of you, see a painting from earlier in Floyd's career, and on this side, see something made just a couple of years ago. And so right there, you're going to be able to make 
those kinds of connections, pull those kinds of threads in, in a much more readily available way than we could. And I love seeing that. These guys have done such an amazing job with that. So uh, I can't wait um, to hopefully see some of you on Saturday and uh, hear what you think right there among the work. But that leads us to, I think now, looking at a few things to give you a little primer on this work. And, and Floyd's going to uh, talk with us a little bit about them and see where we go with it. So let me grab this little thing here. I'm just going to sit down so you all look at the pictures, not me. And let's see if this works. Maybe I'm on the wrong side of the computer now. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> on the left, uh, from, I believe, 1987, maybe? Uh, we were holding Mrs. Cleaver for ransom. And you know what I love about this is I love taking kids in front of a piece like this because they're like, Who's Mrs. Cleaver? Um, <laughs> and, and so you actually have to start from the beginning. What does that mean? What does Mrs. Cleaver mean? And on the right, raw deal from the 1990s. So uh, here I think you're seeing two very different pieces coming from very different places in which uh, Floyd is, I think, finding the, the visual tools, the visual means of expression to best get that idea out there. And that's what Floyd is so good at. If I may throw out a flattering uh, statement, that's what Floyd is so good at, is finding the right visual and conceptual language to get that idea out there uh, in whatever way is necessary, be it painting or sculpture or photography, uh, it, it doesn't matter. He finds, finds the right way. So uh, I'm going to now turn it over to you to talk about these two pieces. And then we'll have two more pairs of images.